Okay, so Netanyahu came to town. He came to Washington, D.C. And then immediately afterwards, uh, he, and he met with uh, President Biden. And he also uh, spoke with, uh, he went to President Trump uh, to, to meet with him at uh, Mar-a-Lago. Fine. But uh, Kamala Harris, the, the vice president and uh, the presidential nominee for the Democratic Party, seemingly, as far as I understand, I get a little confused if she actually is the nominee, not the nominee, whatever it is. Uh, that's not my, that's not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to be a technocrat about American politics. I'm just trying to understand what these world leaders are, are thinking about Israel. And she is a world leader, like it or not. So she starts this news conference by saying, I love Israel so much. So much do I love Israel. As a little girl, I went around collecting money for Israel. So it's like, like she just puts out her bona fides there. Of course, she's married to a Jewish man as well. Fine. And then the minute she's done with laying out her pro-Israel bona fides, how indeed she is a, uh, uh, you know, a lover of Israel, she starts going at how Israel has to shrink. Let's go to it. Scale of human suffering in Gaza including the death of far too many innocent civilians. Okay, so Israel is killing too many civilians. That is a blood libel. That's the beginning of the blood libel. Israel is killing civilians. Too many civilians, right? Not like, ding it, they started a war with you. The majority of those civilians are for Hamas. Not everybody, but a lot of them. And we're fighting a war to, to, to get our hostages back, to push back this jihadist organization that wants to destroy Israel. No, the problem is the killing of civilians. I am not in any way justifying and 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 or 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 glossing over the death of civilians. Every life lost is a tragedy. And I'm not just saying that, I mean that. It's really heartbreaking. But at the same time, we have a war on, a war that was foisted upon us, a war that of, of annihilation, an organization dedicated to our annihilation, and a lot of civilian population that has been shown time and time again to be supportive of that, right? So after saying her bona fides, the next thing she has to say is Israel's got to shrink. It's got to, first thing, it's got to shrink away from Gaza. We can't rule or govern Gaza. We got to shrink away from that. And we got to stop the big fight against them. And I made clear my serious concern about the dire humanitarian situation there, with over 2 million people facing high levels of food insecurity and half a million people facing... So they're facing food insecurity. We're like shoving food over there nonstop, right? The Hamas are taking the food down into their bunkers, Right. But the problem is, is that Israel has to stop fighting. That's the way to move forward, says Kamala Harris. In catastrophic levels of acute food insecurity. What has happened in Gaza over the past nine months is devastating. The images of dead children and desperate, hungry people. Okay, so now we've, we, she's been talking for a few minutes here, and she won't talk. stop talking about... The hungry people and the innocent children. That's what Israel's doing. It's hurting all these innocent children. It's not fighting a war of survival against an awful, evil jihad that suppresses its people as, and, and hates the Jewish people and calls to destroy Israel. She's going on and on. And this is, this is I'm sorry, at this point it starts to become a, a blood libel. Let's keep going. Remember, this is after Netanyahu spoke. This is just after. So she's laying out her policy her policy attitudes towards how America, she's she's a potential president of the United States. And by the way, I don't discount for a second that she may indeed be the next president. Fleeing for safety, sometimes displaced for the second, third, or fourth time. We cannot look away in the face of these tragedies. We cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering, and I will not be silent. Thanks to the leadership of our president, Joe Biden, there is a deal on the table for a ceasefire. So just, just look just look at the way it even looks like out there. Harris expressed serious concern with Netanyahu over Gaza. So the bad guy is Israel. Gaza is the victim. Uh, and now she's going to lay out that there's a deal on the table. A deal with who? Have you ever heard the expression, a deal with the devil? It's the deal. It's the most deal with the devil ever. Or maybe there's been others, but but this is an awful and, and, and horrible thing. Uh, here, let's see what Susan Hoffman says. She says, how long until she gets that Hamas is stealing everything? 
I I'm sorry, Susan. I think that she gets it just fine. I think that she gets it just fine. I think that she's in cahoots, in cahoots with that. I also saw a comment from somebody from Morocco, an Arab that stands with Israel from Morocco. Um, Muhammad says, is it true that Israel carpet bombs humanitarian safe zones with refugee tents? No, it's not. Nice try, part of the blood libel there. But here's a normal Arab, or at least a Moroccan. A Yassin says, I'm from Morocco. I love and support Israel forever. Thank you very much, Yassin. And voices from the Arab world that stand with Israel are very, very important today. All right, let's keep going a little bit more with uh, with uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. And a hostage deal. And it is important that we recall what the deal involves. The first phase of the deal would bring about a full ceasefire, including a withdrawal of the Israeli military from population centers in Gaza. In the second phase, the Israeli military would withdraw from Gaza entirely, and it would lead to a permanent end to the hostilities. Right. Okay. 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 I got to stop. I got to stop you, Camelos. Let me get this straight. If Israel pulls out of Gaza, it'll lead to a permanent end of the hostilities. That sounds so smart. And yet it is, it is, it is prima facie false, a lie, a construct that is just not there. When we left Gaza, when we shrank is when the jihad took over. So if you're saying that if we leave, that will be the end of hostilities, I say no. It'll be the continuation of hostilities. You know, guys, I've had the privilege of being on um, on, on Pierce Morgan, and I think I'm one of the only uh, Israeli spokesmen to have said it clear and loud and vociferous and, and with, no, with no equivocation. I've said it clearly enough. The only way for peace in Gaza is Israeli control of Gaza. It's the only way forward. It's the only way forward. We're the only ones. Israel is the only one that can govern that land, ensure that jihadism doesn't take over, ensure that people have a decent life, decent water, decent education, and that they're not ruled by the jihad and that Israel isn't threatened by the jihad. We're the only ones capable of doing it. And until Israel decides that and makes it clear, and until uh, um, that's said out loud uh, and, and with no more kind of these these games of, of bringing it back. What is Kamala Harris saying? She's saying, listen, this war is, is a victory for Hamas. They hurt you. They're going to keep growing. Back out. Let them rule Gaza. And, and that's the, the end of hostilities. Well, you know. Basically, if you listen to her clearly, she's all the blame is on Israel. Israel's the bad guy. And this is her policy speech the minute uh, that Netanyahu uh, came to town. He, he, they didn't meet, or maybe they did meet for a short meeting. Maybe it could be that they met for 45 minutes or something. The bottom line is she, that's right, that's what happened. She lays out her vision. Israel is to be shrunken. Hamas is to have victory. Uh, the Palestinians are the victims. Israel is the aggressor. That is the 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 that is the narrative that she's weaving, uh, and that is dangerous. Israel shrinking and a return to the very same policy that existed beforehand, and it will bring nothing. It will not bring peace to our region. It will bring nothing but continued warfare. I think that's what these people actually want. I think some of them that's what they want. I think that they couldn't care less about. Palestinians or Arabs or anything like that, they use that as a cudgel against Israel to shrink Israel. Why do they want to, why do they want to shrink Israel? You know, maybe they want to sell arms, maybe, uh, and they, therefore they want to keep everybody fighting. Maybe they want to be the power broker and therefore they want regional powers to be at, at kind of tension. Maybe they just don't like a powerful Israel or powerful Jews. That could very well be. Maybe, maybe they actually don't want peace in this world. Maybe they profit in ways that I can't imagine, and that's how they. That's why they want to keep going. What do you guys think about that? Why, why do people like that want to shrink Israel? Let me see some of your beautiful comments. Here's my good friend Ilana. Yishai, you are unapologetic because you know where your roots are. You know where you came from. That's what it's all about, and the Arabs know it too. That's why they're trying to shrink Israel. 
And I think what, what my good friend Alana is saying here is, is so true, which is one of the main, I'm, I'm going to say something like totally different here for a second. And this happened to me when I was in America now speaking in a few different places, people are like, what's the problem? So I laid out that one of the main problems is Iran and the fact that Iran has now learned to create proxy warfare. And since they are experts at chess, they have laid out the chess pieces and have now surrounded Israel with a noose of proxies in Lebanon, in Gaza, in, with the Houthis in Yemen and in Iraq. And they basically, you know, and they move armament into these places. Uh, so that's that's the big problem. But then on the other hand, a total 180 degree different aspect of the problem, and this is what Ilana is pointing out to, is that many Israelis and many, many Jews and many folks that are critical of Israel simply don't know the history of the Jewish people. And they don't know where we're from, and they don't know the Bible, and they don't know about God, and they don't know about the Holy Land. They don't know that Israel has had two commonwealths, that this is our third commonwealth in this land, okay? And that we're not like here from 1948 or from the 20s, but this is our ancestral land. And yes, it's God-given, and that's the language of the Middle East. Anybody who's going to start blaming me for talking about God and being like, you're messianic! I'm like, just calm down. Our whole region talks about God. That's the way we converse around here. That's the way we think, all of us, Jews and Arabs. And yes, that leads you to be unapologetic. You know your history. You know your spirituality. You know that you're a Middle Easterner. You know the language, even though we're speaking in English here on the program uh, because we're, we're facing the world here. Um, at the end, we're Middle East people with the Middle East genealogy, with Middle East language, Middle East religion. And we're from here. And all of the efforts to uh, deny our history here uh, uh, prey on our ignorance. We've got to fight that ignorance, and I think that's what Alana was talking about. Now, okay, let's, let's, uh, I've had enough of Kamala. Am I right, guys? You guys had enough of her? 